is unseated from the Premiership. Today, though, Netanyahu is fighting back. On Twitter, he called on MPs not to vote for the coalition. He called it dangerous and left-wing. Well, France 24's Peter O'Brien reports for us on who is in that new coalition. They have little in common save their desire to unseat the country's longest-serving prime minister. Moments before the deadline, centrist Yair Lapid and right-wing nationalist Naftali Bennett struck a deal, along with a collection of other parties. It's historic because it hinges on the support of Mansour Abbas, head of what would be the first Arab party ever to be part of a governing coalition. President Reuven Rivlin was informed of the agreement by phone. <laughs> Yair Lapid's party is popular with secular, middle-class voters, while Naftali Bennett's party caters to religious and nationalist hardliners. Despite the ideological differences, the two are united by a desire to get rid of the divisive Benjamin Netanyahu who's on trial for charges of corruption and end the turmoil which has seen four deadlocked elections in the last two years. Under the deal, they would split the job of prime minister, each serving for two consecutive years, Bennett serving first. Mansour Abbas's party, meanwhile, takes them into a slim majority. In return, Abbas secured agreements for legal recognition of Arab villages in southern Israel, 7.5 billion euros worth of investment in Arab towns and cities, and a five-year plan to combat crime in Arab communities. The alliance, though, is fragile. There's more than a week before lawmakers must vote to confirm it, giving Netanyahu time to drum up support against it. Now, in other world news, the Central African Republic and Chad are calling on the United Nations to investigate an incident at the borders between the two countries where at least six soldiers were killed. Now, that incident has shone a light on the occasionally fraught relations between the two sub-Saharan countries. Today, Chadian troops have arrived at the border, as our correspondent Clement Di Roma reports for us from Central African Republic. Chadian reinforcements have arrived at the border in the last couple of days, near the place where the attack on a Chadian outpost by Central African forces took place on Sunday, killing six Chadian soldiers. Since then, the two countries are saying that they want to reduce tensions after a Central African delegation visited Njamena.